I am old enough to remember the debut of City Tech as its own box set game, and I was so excited about that. And I realized if you look at all those City Tech battles I played, if you had a video of them and you played it in reverse order, it's a story about a bunch of benevolent machines who help rebuild a city and each other and then moonwalk or fly back home. Hello, everybody. My name is Preston Poulter, and I've really been thinking about the psychological appeal of Battletech and comparing it to, say, other miniature games. In past videos, I've talked about a competitor that really didn't work very well, a uh, combat assault video, you know, info card if you want to check out that video. But in looking at game systems, I don't think that Battletech is inherently superior to, like, I recently played, uh, you know, the game after a long break. And just going through the turn, rolling all the time, it takes a while. There are certainly ways that you could simplify those mechanics and then field larger armies with more mechs and do stuff. And I'm like, why, I think, do people have such a psychological hook here? And to me, I mean, one, it's kind of a legacy thing. It's something we've always played. But also, I think people get really psychologically invested in the idea of piloting that mech. And to me... They love fantasizing, visualizing, whatever you want to term it, of being Godzilla. You know, it's boom. They're they're smashing through the buildings like the Veritech fighter just going through five buildings and getting up and kind of dusting itself off. The physics of it make absolutely no sense. I'll give you many examples. One, why is a mech so much tougher than a tank? Right? I mean, like... The alloys used involved in their construction, as well as the internal structure, shouldn't be any different. They should be exactly the same. If anything, a tank should be stronger because it doesn't have those spindly legs, right? But vehicles for, in this universe, vehicles are weak in comparison to mechs. Why is that? Godzilla, right? Like, let's, you see big monster lizard? He, oh, puny, puny car, pick up and throw. It appeals to the psychology that is imbued in the game but unspoken. And also, look at missiles. In our modern world, we got, you know, pretty tough steel alloys, which, by the way, you know, what alloys are they using? But a missile can sink a ship. Just one missile. Boom. In the Battletech world, you get hit with a ton of missiles, and the mech's like, hmm, you know, whatever. Unless it happens to get a lucky critical hit, a uh, mech can get hit, you know, with, oh, an LRM-20 at distance. Oh, look, all 20 missiles hit you. And the player can just be expecting to go, huh, huh, uh, okay, where's that going to go? You know, it's not really a big deal to get hit with missiles. Well, you know, it's like the whole monster movie of Godzilla or King Kong. You're getting hit with all these musicians and you're just, uh, it's nothing. The only thing that can really challenge you is another monster. So I really think that the psychological appeal of Battletech, and this is one that you don't really see replicated in the other games I'm looking at, is the idea that we are, in essence, kind of role-playing or board gaming out the big monster flick of Godzilla versus Mothra or whatever, and that that's really what these kind of Battletech battles are. And I'm sorry if this seems like a silly observation to some of you, but as a creator, as a designer, I look at things and I go, what is the psychological payoff that the players are getting? And it just occurred to me last week, Godzilla. This has been Preston Poulter with Lords of Iron. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.